Hello and welcome to episode 1272 of The Sleeper in the Bust. It is Thursday, March 21st. I'm your host, Paul Spore, joined this afternoon by Justin Mason. Justin, it's been a while. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Back from New York and uh, apologize to everyone that uh, we haven't had anything go up uh, in about a week. But like, like I said, I was in New York. Didn't bring my mic with me. Wouldn't have had yeah. time to record. And I, and I didn't. I didn't end up finding guests. I mean, I I, I didn't put a lot of effort into it either. I kind of took the time. I was updating rankings and everything. I was just kind of staying on the grind with articles. So my apologies there. I could have definitely been, made a bigger effort. But hey, we got all the previews out and everything. Today we're going to kind of follow up on a bunch of pitching stuff. Talk a bunch of pitching news. In fact, you and Jason did a great pitching uh, closer preview, and then that day the number one or at least regarded by many as the number one at no worse than number two goes out for half the year and it's been a bloodbath ever since justin so we're going to get into closers and kind of reassess the entire landscape you know i'm a pay for saves guy i don't know what the hell i'm going to do on saturday jeff zimmerman if you're listening and shelly verstreet close your ears i got in the main event with both of them and I respect both of them, and that's why I'm not happy because I respect how quality, uh, how good of quality players they are. I'm not happy about that. My little gambit to do the draft while everyone's drafting on Saturday in Vegas didn't quite work, and I I knew it wouldn't fully work. I didn't I didn't think there'd be a bunch of scrubs in there with me because there aren't that many scrubs that are looking to pay 1,700 bucks. You know, I'm one of the scrubs. The the people that are in my league are like, yes, I got Spore in my league, so uh, I'm still very excited for the main. But how did New York go? Uh, New York was amazing. Um, I got my write up. I on... missed y'all. Yeah, I'm, we missed you too. We had a, actually a really couple cool events, uh, like Danielle uh, and I, and, and Frank Stample and Chris Towers, like uh, organized and Jason organized like a group hangout Friday night at this bar, and we ended up like going out Very to dinner cool. afterwards. And um, I mean, we were out till like two or three o'clock in the morning, uh, which is it was awesome. We had, we just had a blast. And uh, my, I, I have my Towers draft recap up on the site. So you I can saw go that. read that. Made some mistakes. Uh, I'm not super thrilled with my team. I still feel like I've got a good team and that I can recover from it, but um, just didn't execute in the way that I would normally do in an auction. So, well, uh, a lot of times those are the teams that end up doing mm -hmm. big things, right? We come out, this team's amazing. I love it. Pfft fifth place Eh, this team kind of sucks i made these mistakes i'm gonna bust my ass but it's not that good in contention till the finish you know first second place types up not always but that does happen sometimes so hopefully and you're gonna put the work in to kind of keep the team going there i saw some players i really liked on there uh whether it's true or not i'm gonna pretend that brenton doyle was influenced by me when we did our sleepers because i really it was him. i mean you and jason uh Sweet. jason literally walked in the room as we we're doing the reserves uh and i go you ready for this and he looks at me and goes what i go brenton doyle it's yeah, baby, job. let's go. Jay and I, big fans of Brenton Doyle out there. Hey, get a cheap piece of Colorado. Why not? No, but I, I really did like your reserves. Colt Keith, Keith Colt, you had to get him, obviously. Um, yeah. Clayton Kershaw, plenty of IL slots. You can hang on to him. He'll be a little summer pickup for you. Waka, who we've talked about both liking quite a bit. Michael Massey, who we've also talked about liking quite a bit on KC. Doyle and Austin Hayes. I thought you put together a really nice group of reserves. But people can read the full article there. You got your boy Bailey Ober at the very least. And I think you paid a fair price, 12 bucks. Yeah, you didn't get taxed. I, I, I was super, super stoked about I that. I thought you'd get taxed out the room. The elite starting pitching was really, really expensive. And so I just stayed away from it. I mean, what would you have paid? Him. How much could they have hemmed you up? I know your value is about 15, 16, because it's 15, 52. So if we yeah, I think I 16. had them. Um, I think I had them around 16 bucks. I would have paid full price, uh, to be yeah. quite honest. Uh, and it almost died at like eight. Um, oh, and I was just, how like, much would there. you have been doing backflips? Yeah, like I was just sitting there, like, and I think someone saw the look in my eyes and went, "Nah, I'm not gonna <laughs> nah, I don't think." Oh wait, Justin loves this guy. I can't let it happen. Yeah. But we're gonna talk about some pitchers that we have liked uh, that are dealing with some issues health wise, and kind of want to get your thoughts there. And let's start with one that we both have propped up quite a bit, and he's a little bit of a boring guy that you know we've been getting mid mid to late rounds because there aren't too many others that are interested in him. Maybe they've won the battle here, but hopefully we can win the war, and Eduardo Rodriguez ends up being okay. He's dealing with some lat tightness right now there hasn't been a lot of freak out about it so that's good but it isn't uh it isn't look it is looking like something that might linger a little bit they are encouraged with the lat no mri just yet is this changing how you might be drafting eduardo the rest of draft season here as we kind of wait for more news 
Yeah, I mean, if you're in like a standard league with IL slots, probably not. Um, I probably just, I mean, obviously you drop him a little bit just because he's injured right now, but it, he's already picked it, 200. If he goes two and a quarter, you still just going to jump in on Eduardo. Yeah, I think I would. I think in, if you're talking like, so for me personally, like I've got, I think five or six remaining drafts and five of six are going to be on an FBC. Probably so no not. ILs. Yeah. No IL spots. I'm probably not drafting him there. Okay. So, plus you have your shares. So if he pops off the yeah. way you expect slash hope, uh, you're already covered there. So maybe you don't have to keep doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on Eduardo Rodriguez, but at least it is looking like it's not terrible news right now. We'll see. You never know. Stay tuned. If he's somebody that you're, you're buying in on Eduardo Rodriguez with us, you're going to want to stay up, up to date all the way up leading up to your draft, which obviously this is a huge draft weekend coming up. So that one's a bit of a bummer, but uh, we both have shares already that we can just kind of hang on to and maybe not uh, further our portfolio on Eduardo Rodriguez. Let's talk Marlins rotation because I really, you know, it's kind of been twisted upside down, right? We were actually just going over some of our, uh, our, our, our gladiator leagues and some of our previous draft champions, kind of looking at the carnage that has happened. And we found out that we've both been hit by these big Marlins issues, uh, with Yuri Perez and Braxton Garrett, both going to be out to start the season. Ryan Weathers, David Puck, uh, David Puck, AJ Puck in. I don't know. I was thinking David because of David Weathers, uh, which is Ryan's dad. And so I think I just made him David Puck for some reason. AJ Puck, both in. So first off, let's talk the injuries. Braxton Garrett, somebody that you've definitely propped up as a guy that you're, you're very interested in. He's going to start the season on the IL. How concerned are you uh, with regards to the full season here? Uh, he's taken a live BP. He's already working his way back. Is the shoulder something that still has you concerned with Braxton Garrett now that it's he's going to start the season on the IL? Not overly concerned, and um, I was fine drafting him in Tout Wars. I think I got him there. Um, and uh, I'd be fine dra drafting him as, like, one of my stashes, even in an NFBC league. I just think he it sounds like he's going to be fine and that he's going to, you know, work his way back. And the price is just so cheap. I love the skills on, on Garrett. So not nearly as worried on Garrett as I am on Yuri Perez. Now, if we're looking at like a 260 to 275 ADP on Braxton Garrett, being that you do have a lot of NFBC drafts left and there are no ILs, is it considering he's working his way back and might only miss a couple starts, is Braxton Garrett somebody that you might stay in on in the sure. NFBC world? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I think especially because guys like this tend to just like plummet in drafts. Like if I'm yes. getting them outside of like the top 300 picks or so. Which is like, possible. Yeah, I, th I think I'm fine with that. I've actually Three. got an NFBC ADP thing from the last few drafts. So I'll bring it up and tell you where okay. uh, Garrett is going um, over the course of the last four NF or, uh, main event drafts. Okay, yeah, that will be very interesting because, yeah, it, he does go past 300 as his high end. And if you can get Garrett that cheap, he is expected to be back it early to or early to mid May or excuse me early to mid April 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 not May not May so we're looking at a couple weeks so it shouldn't be too bad if you still like Braxton Garrett what what what, what are you looking at for his ADP there you got it uh I have it he is going da, da, da. of course oh there oh, 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 oh. where he was he um of course, my sheet is all messed up. <laughs> you know, why, why are you looking all right, at that? There we go. Oh, go, uh, ahead, go ahead. Pick 257 in the last, and this, so this includes the last four main event drafts. Do you um, have min maxes on there or no? Uh, I probably because I'd be curious, like where, where, where the it has to be past 300, I would imagine the max, maybe not. Yeah, but... the, the max is 323. And this doesn't include last night's drafts because I okay. already written this up. And we're recording so. this on March 21st. So mm -hmm. you would probably take him in that 323 range, Braxton Garrett, yeah? Yeah, I think I'd take him closer to that. I'm actually a little surprised. I mean, his Me too. 198. Like Holding his value. Wow, I am yeah. really surprised by that. Like, kind of blown away. Not, not, not that I don't think Braxton Garrett's good, but, like, the market usually overreacts to these and pushes these guys down but Can it i seems tell like... you what i think it what i think it is absolutely it, it just dawned on me while we were talking so that whole kerfuffle about the draft boards thing yes uh last week uh in retaliation uh zach waxman posted a t a main event team of phil dussos 
Wait, that really? had Braxton Garrett on it, but it was a fake. But it was a bit, team. right? It was oh. a bit. It wasn't real. And I wonder if people saw that. We're like, oh, and he like he took well, Braxton Phil's Garrett, still like, in on him. Yeah, I think I think I think he took Braxton Garrett like pick one eighty or something like that. Dude, that so, would be so that'd funny. Be, that'd be I hilarious mean, if that was. I mean, in in, in fairness. It would prove Zach's point that like yes, a group of people are sheep and that, that's his whole thing. And you know, we both talked to him about it. If people don't know what we're talking about, honestly, don't worry about it because it's really much ado about nothing. But it's this whole thing about draft boards being published with people's names so that you know, maybe lesser players or players that aren't putting as much effort in can find out who the studs of the NFBC are drafting and then kind of tail them or push their prices up. The only reason that it doesn't bother me as much is because they get all the boards from their friends and so yeah. they get their own advantage from it and they just don't want to lose that advantage so again i've talked with zach privately you have as well mm -hmm. I, i'm i'm not trying to stir it back up if if this gets back to him or anything mm -hmm. but um if that is why braxton garrett's price is up then i will say fair play to zach on that because yeah, that yeah that's it's so actually funny. hilarious yeah It'd be really good fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's talk the one that is a lot more frightening, which is Yuri Perez, whose price is absolutely plummeting. I, I have the last eight mains that I was looking at, and his price point is down to two thirty-five, right in line with Braxton Garrett. And he was a top one hundred. He was a top seventy-five pick before this Yuri Perez. He's dealing with elbow soreness. There is grave concerns about him right now. Uh, that people think that this could be substantial for his season, especially the way they've already kind of slow, you know, they slow played him last year. The latest news, or not the latest news, the second latest news, March 14th, was that he was still optimistic for opening day, uh, but then it said he won't throw until next week, the next day, which was March 15th, which means this week, by the way. So where are we on him? Is Yuri Perez a bargain, or are you staying completely away from him? <sighs> If I've got a lot of IL spots, then I think I would take the gamble just because mm -hmm. the upside is so good. But like, I've got my main event drafts. I've got two auction, you know, fifteen hundred dollar auction championship drafts coming up. Uh, you know, over the course of the next week, and I would not touch him. In the, like, when he's is your first off main? My board. Uh, it's, it's Saturday. Oh, say, same as mine then. Two thirty. Yeah. Or whatever. Uh, no, mine's later. Mine's. I oh, you're doing the night five, ones. Five, yeah, five p.m. Eastern. Okay. So. Um, I, I saw that you and Shelly and Jeff were in that one, and I was like, nope, not risking it. I, Wait, I know are you they're serious? Gonna... You yeah. did that? Oh my yeah, God. I was like, I, I don't want to draft you. Especially well, I was like... the first one in there. Why are they joining that? Yeah, especially well, especially you and Jeff. Like, You guys for sure know who I like. Exactly, and we've already been in a league together. Thanks, Greg. Yeah. I know it's machine done, by the way. I'm not accusing him of anything. Um, but go in there and manipulate it. Take him out of my league. Jeez, I've already had to battle him along with you and DVR and Scott Jen or um, uh, Dal Dalton Del Don, D, D3 rather, uh, Scott Jenstead in that big league that we played two years ago. Yeah. I don't want to face Jeff again. And again, it's out of respect. He and Tanner Bell are incredible and they're going to make my life hell in that main event. So, uh, and Shelly, don't sleep. I'm not sleeping on Shelly at all. Her first foray into the main event, she draws Jeff Zimmerman as well. So, uh, yeah. good luck to her. Uh, but yeah, I'm with you on Yuri Perez. Like, I'm nervous. Now, is there any news you could get before Saturday that would bring you back? Back for opening day, ready to go. Are you in? Probably not in NF. Well, I mean, if, if he's going to be back for opening day, maybe I would be okay with it. But also but the I, price jumps back up to say 180. Yeah. 180 I would do, I think. Okay. I mean, we're talking about maybe, maybe, maybe it would jump to, like, the top 100. Yeah, maybe it so, would jump all the way back up. I don't know for sure, but uh, I guess if he's back for opening day and people, I'm could probably feel not. I'm probably just not. Like I just, I, 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 I don't love think Yuri I am Perez. Either. Yeah, he's amazing. But like there, there were already some workload concerns, and now you're talking about a guy who, like, he's slight framed. Like these kind of builds don't nothing wrong with hold that. Up super. I it it's great for leverage and for podcasting, but <laughs> in terms of like holding up over the course of a full season like yeah i'm probably so i'm 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 a little scared i think i just pass i think i think that's completely understandable so let's talk about the guys that have you know i don't want to say benefited because i don't like to frame it like that but they have you know they, they they are the guys that are ascending into the rotation now um aj puck aka david if you want to call him that and ryan weathers who is the son of david weathers and you know let's throw in trevor rogers here too he's back from the dead a little bit and i would like to get your thoughts on him let's start with aj puck i will say i was doing a podcast with uh our good friend nick pollock 
and he was you know preaching the exploits of aj puck and i was saying yeah i don't know man i used to love this guy and i'm out he's like well why and i was like the more i thought about it the more i didn't have an answer because i've stayed in on the likes of reynaldo lopez forever why all of a sudden am i making this big you know uh push to move away from aj puck when he's looking the best he's ever looked so i said you know what you're right i will i will back off on that um i'm gonna jump back in here he's having a wonderful spring aj puck has looked the best we've ever seen he looked incredible last year made a big jump in his control with a career best five percent walk rate and now he's going to be a starter. And at 29, they're not going to baby him. If he can go 150 innings, he's going to get 150 innings. I firmly believe that with AJ Puck. So I jump back in. What say you of AJ Puck? Yeah, I may need to reevaluate too. Um, I just have a hard time believing he's be able to stay healthy as a starter. And that sure to me is. But isn't uh, that covered in the price point? Which again was something that Nick kind of pointed out to me. And I was like, yeah, 215, you know, past pick 200. Doesn't that, aren't you kind of covered a little bit with health issue i think he's right like in a 15 team league yeah or uh, sorry in a, in a 10 or a 12 team league yes in a 15 team league i think we're right at that cutoff point so i feel like if he drops in a draft and like i'm getting him around 240 250 like okay i i could you know the only problem is his max in the main event is 242 so that probably not going to happen. No, no. Um, it looks like the main event market is very hot on Puck, especially yeah. now that he has a guaranteed job. So get all the thoughts of post 300 out of your head. You're going to be paying mid 200s yeah. for Puck. I'm not totally against it. He's looked amazing. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay with it, generally speaking, but like you're right in like premium dart throwing area, which is like, like Louis Varland, who we're going to talk about here in a little yeah. bit. Uh, Griffin Canning, isn't uh, he James premium Axton. potential though? All these guys are, aren't they? Okay, but but I'm, I'm just want, might want to make sure that you're including Puck in that, yes? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. I'm including okay. him in that, but like to me, like I I want to tend to go with the guy who's got the better health track record, okay? Who, if, if if all things are being equal, and I think all things are equal between a guy like him and Griffin Canning, well, I guess Griffin Canning doesn't have a great health track record, so but sure, him and but like he's... Louis Varland. Like, yeah. like Louis Rollins has got a better health track record. I think his job is a little bit more secure in Minnesota than at least long term in Miami. Okay. Like Miami could easily move Puck back to you know the bullpen. And considering like all of a sudden like Tanner Scott can't figure out how to throw strikes anymore, and like you're like maybe he could be go back to you know potentially being elite closer. So. um I think I'd rather have the other guy, which is Trevor Rogers. Like, right? Like, yeah. Trevor, well, like, there's two other lefties, and these are three lefties here that are really interesting because uh, we're going to talk Ryan Weathers as well. But let's talk Trevor Rogers first. He's back. Uh, remember, he had that scintillating rookie season in 2021 that got everyone really excited. 264 ERA, 115 WHIP with a 29% K rate. Here we go. We got ourselves a premium lefty. Then he labored through 2022, uh, just 107 innings of poor work, 547 ERA, 150 WHIP. And then we saw 18 innings last year of who cares what the results were because yeah. it was 18 innings. He's back now, looking great in spring. You mentioned that you are in on Trevor Rogers. I imagine the price point's part of it because he's going late 200s yeah. more consistently than Puck. Yeah, he's going around 260 in the main events right now. I think I'd rather just take that gamble. And I mean, part of it is I've just loved Trevor Rogers for so long that um, I want him to be good. Me too. Uh, I also know that, like at this point in the draft, like when in a 15 team league, when you get past 225, which is like the halfway point, like I'm okay just dropping the guy. Like it just, it, if things don't look right, like I'll just, I'll stream the hell out of that spot. Uh, so if you're playing in a 10 team league or a 12 team league, you know, figure out where the halfway point is, 15th round, and just start going, okay, after this point, any of these guys are droppable right away. Uh, and, you know, Trevor Rogers falls way below those, those thresholds as well. So, um, I just, yeah, I think there's a lot of upside. This was a guy that I think almost everybody had a top 25 starting pitcher just a few seasons ago. Lots and of love for just, Rogers. He's just been hurt. Uh, so I think the fact like he, could he be like this year's Carlos Rodon who like is an afterthought and then all of a sudden is an elite starting pitcher again. Absolutely. Could I think he so. be, could he be the other version of Carlos Rodon where he just never throws 
quality innings because he's hurt. Absolutely. So it's a gamble, sure. but one worth one worth taking, I think. I think so. I think so. Both lefties so far. I mean, on Ryan Weathers is the cheapest of the bunch, the flyeriest, the lottery ticketiest, if you will. 361 in the most recent mains that I have here, uh, the eight mains uh over the last few days. Also having a wonderful spring. It's 18 innings, but it's a 30% strikeout rate, 6% walk with a nice 15% swinging strike rate supporting those strikeouts and great results. Three ERA, 106 whip. Again, small sample, but he looks strong. He's a former big-time prospect. He's still only 24 years old. Ryan Weather's been in our consciousness for a while because he debuted at age 21 uh, in back in 2021 for 95 innings of a mixed bag of, of work. And he's been kind of grinding ever since only three and two thirds in 2022 and 57 and two thirds last year. None of it particularly good either, but here he is now things a bit ironed out. Sometimes it takes time, right? Prospect growth isn't linear. We say it all the time. Um, is this the time for Ryan Weathers? Because you talk about a guy that you can take the gamble, and if it doesn't work, two, three starts in, easy cut. Do you like Ryan Weathers? Yet another lefty, uh, four of five in the, uh, or excuse me, one of the four in the Marlins rotation. I've never been a Ryan Weathers guy. Um, so, like, initially when, like, I had a conversation with Nick at Labor earlier this month, he was all like, and he was actually helping me in the reserve, like, finish off my reserve roster. Um, he was like, oh, Ryan Weathers, take Ryan Weathers. I'm like, Ryan Weathers is boring. Like, he's just got, yeah, he's got a full arsenal, but it's just like none of it's good. It's all like mediocre pitches, but he's looked a lot better. And, you know, Nick's suggestion definitely helped influence me to kind of go take another look. And I think I need to update his projection and kind of give him some more strikeouts. Um, it's a great park to pitch in. I think he mm -hmm. could like lock himself into a rotation spot moving forward. I like Max Meyer too is on this team, but he's not going to make the opening day rotation. Exactly. So, uh, but uh, I think Weathers is a dude. Yeah. Like you should definitely take a charge though. Cause when you're talking about like around pick 350, which is where he's gone in the main event this year, like you're talking about a bunch of other guys who are either like long shots to make the rotation or garbage skills like <laughs> like like do you really want dane dunning yeah dane dunning's in the rotation and he can volume but like hey i like dane dunning i do too but i like him more as a dc play than i like him as a i like, agree uh, just pack on there's some just volume no there. there's no upside in dane dunning, but he's right? got that new special of, pitch yeah they all do that's <laughs> I forget what he was calling it. Something, something silly that he unveiled or whatever. But I, I hey, you know what? I'm going to cape even harder for Dane Dunning. He has yielded a 32% K rate in spring, thanks to a 30% swinging strike rate in 11 innings. That is pretty bananas. That I'm is not, bananas. I'm not trying to overly advocate okay. for Dane like, Dunning here, but your point is well taken. I'm sorry. I didn't mean like to derail us on Dunning. The pitcher like that goes right before Ryan Weathers is Taj Bradley. When's Taj Bradley going to pitch again? Um, like, 2025. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, so I'm like, nervous, man. Yeah. I'm super nervous. Like Garrett Crochet goes right after Ryan Weathers. Like I think Garrett Crochet is a really interesting dart throw, but it is a yes. dart throw and it is on a really bad team that will not win games. So, Agreed. um, you know, like I think that I, I think Weathers is a really good example for some, for me, like as a guy like that, I was kind of out on that. I'm willing to kind of, you know, take a gamble on cheap, you know, another guy like we talked about that I bagged on earlier this offseason um, was Zach Littell. Zach Littell's looked a lot different in spring. He didn't, he didn't appreciate what you said. He said yeah, he was apparently. out there trying to prove you wrong. It was his yeah. direct quote. And like, so like, yeah, when you're after a pick like 350, why not take a dart throw on one of these guys? Because if they pan out, then great. And if they don't, they're a really easy drop. Exactly. And that's another thing that that uh, Nick and I talked about on that episode, which um, I'm being a little bit coy with everything about it because it's not out yet, but I will give details once it's available. OK, mm. it's going to be on a new feed. We're doing a podcast. Yes, Nick started another new project. OK, yeah. And I'm part of it. And guess what? He's probably going to start a project with you because he wants to get every sleeper in the bus co-host and start yeah. an individual. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a little left out. Well, and it's going in sequential order. Eno was oh, on okay. before me, so he did okay. the craft. Now uh -huh. he and I have broke off the fireside chat. There you go. There's your little teaser. Yeah, it folks. is. We uh -huh. broke off the fireside chat into our own thing. It'll be going up at some point, probably today or tomorrow. And then, uh, you know, down the line, you and him have to start something. Okay. Yeah. So maybe, and, maybe you know, the, him, the him two and coasts. Jason apparently have got something in the works too. Wait, Jason Clatt? Yeah. Are you being serious? Yeah. I, Oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. 
No, I'm just saying. So he literally is starting something with everybody yeah, on our staff. Except I, for me. You're next. Again, it's a hierarchical, yeah. you know, mm. due, due to tenure. So you're next. Oh, okay. It would All only right. make sense that you're next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm look yeah, I'll I'll believe it when I see it. I, I like an idea with I like, I like something with like a two coasts thing with you guys being in San Francisco and New York. Something where maybe you just you just talk about something on each coast there. You can only talk about West pitchers. He can only talk about East pitchers. And you guys just forget the flyover country. I don't know. Other, I'm other coast I'm bias or something? I don't know. We'll see, we'll yeah, see. yeah. I, I, I'm just trying to come up with something there. But uh, anyway. I, I was trying to get Nick while we were having dinner with uh, Jeff Erickson to um, do a dad joke podcast with Erickson. That would be fantastic. Yeah. We might be stretching him too thin, but that would be, I would listen to the hell out of that. I, would, I love I would Jeff's puns. I participate yeah, I with him in their chat yeah. on Sunday nights mm -hmm. when I'm available. I love the puns. Uh, uh, and he's so smart that his puns are always like so sharp too. Yeah. They're not they're just like run of the mill BS puns. He's going and, like next and, level. It, you got to be sharp. The the problem with Nick and, and, and uh, Jeff doing that is they wouldn't have Scott to be the straight man. Cause Scott True. is the perfect so good. straight man. So good at being like just like oh like yeah. just the, the they, they the, would the, be feeding into each other way too much if it was those two. The utter desperation in Scott's voice when Jeff makes a joke. <laughs> it's just so fun. what am I doing with my Sunday nights? <laughs> uh by the way, you should be listening to the Roadwire pod on Sunday nights, yep. especially once the season starts after Fab. It's such a fun party. You get a lot of people in there in the chat. Justin and I are almost always in there every week. So if you like us at all, if you're listening to this, you like us at least a little bit, you should jump in there and hang out. That's on YouTube. You can find that and we get in that chat there. But anyway, Ryan Weathers, I think we're both kind of interested. He's so cheap that easy decisions I, I by the way i started that whole nick conversation by saying a point that he made he said he wants players late that are easy decisions not somebody that you're going to yeah. draft and then you can't use them for the first three starts because they're facing the dodgers you know padres and then the rockies and coors or some crap because you wouldn't yep. use that guy somebody you can use right away and make a decision so uh yep. ryan weathers you're going to know right away what, what you think about him all right so that's the marlins uh rotation right now and you know we're out on Garrett and or no, we're we're medium on Garrett. The price is fair. We're pretty out on Perez in NFBC because of his price point and the fact that he might still go on the IL for a while. And I'm more in on Puck. Uh, we both like Weathers and Rogers. Cubs rotation. Drew Smiley to the bullpen. Jordan Wicks and Javier Assad both make the rotation. We are ostensibly more of a deep league pod just because we both play a lot of deep leagues. So this is kind of up our alley. Guys like Jordan Wicks and Javier Assad are the kind of guys that we have to kind of be looking at on the waiver wire and streaming and whatnot. Let's start with Jordan Wicks. Put up 35 innings last year with some, some intrigue, but the skills weren't really there. It was a 9% strikeout minus walk ratio is really really ugly and this spring he's been pretty good what's interesting though justin is he only had a 17 percent k rate but a 16 percent swinging strike rate so he's like miss getting the whiffs but i guess they're early in the counts he isn't putting guys away but a 260 era 104 whip in the 17 innings for jordan wicks does he give you any interest here 24 year old right hander or left hander excuse me jordan wicks for the cubs any interest now that he has a job yeah i'm very interested in uh, like he showed some pretty decent skills last year. Um, I know the strikeout rate is got a lot to be left to be desired, but mm -hmm. uh, like I said, like the underlying skills say that he should be much better. I think his Cubs team is going to be pretty darn good. And he's an so. afterthought in drafts. He's going after the top 400 in main event drafts now. Um, Let's boost that based on him winning a spot since that was announced relatively recently. Okay. His, his max or his min right now is 342. Okay, that uh, might be his ADP. And then, yeah. right? Let, I think that's a fair jump. Let's jump him up. 60 picks, Jordan Wicks. Are that you still, right are still good? In there? that Ryan Weathers area, um, I think that I would be interested. Um, okay. I think I probably prefer Weathers, but I think we can make the argument that Wicks' job is safer, that the team is better. Better team. Uh, better division probably. To, to pitch in. So Definitely that. Um. I think you could make the argument that Wicks should be the pick, but right now, like, even if like, I don't even know if he's going to jump out up that high. Like if he's only like three seventy five, that starts putting him around like Jose Quintana, Alex Cobb, who's starting the year on the IL. Uh, Josiah Gray who loves to give up home runs. Like <laughs> Casey Mize, who's starting the year on the IL. Luis Heel. 
who uh, I actually really I like more than all of these guys. I love Luis Heal. <laughs> uh, so Trevor McGill, um, you know, who might Trevor be or Tyler? Bo- Trevor. Both are kind of okay because both are kind of interesting. Oh, you said the same yeah. thing. That would have given it yeah. away. Sorry, I should have listened. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm very interested in, in Jordan or Jordan. No, not Jordan. Jordan Wicks. Wicks. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Not Jordan. No, I, said Jordan I, I just said Jordan Hicks. Yeah, yeah, Jordan uh, Wicks yeah. of the Chicago so, Cubs, not Jordan Hicks of your San Francisco Giants, who I think both of us are actually kind of out on, right? Yeah, I no, don't want him. But I'm glad he's no longer me. our, you know, number three second starter. starter. <laughs> yeah, oh wait, so, yeah. Have we talked about snow anywhere on a pod? We haven't. We haven't talked about snow. We should talk about. That. We should probably do that. Okay, so we will yeah. do that after Javier Assad here. People will be like, "Why was Blake Snell the fourth topic? What's wrong with these idiots?" Uh, it's been so long, I forgot. Sorry. I guess we, we can talk say. about Michael Lorenzen too. Who signed? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one. My fault. Uh, bad, bad, bad host here. Michael we take Lorenzen a week too, off and we're Texas. just like, and I just it's, fall yeah. apart over yeah. here. My it's, goodness. Okay, so we like Wicks a bit. And we don't think his price is going to rise to any sort of cost prohibitive level. Javier Assad, 109 innings last year of decent work. 305 ERA, 123 whip, only a 12% strikeout minus walk. So nothing overpowering. He's kind of a kitchen sink junk baller type, but it worked last year. Can it work this year? Do we like Javier Assad and his cool goggles? Uh, I He's just so hittable. Like there's just, yeah. it just doesn't feel like there's enough strikeout upside to be worth it to me. And I think, He's kind of the guy that is like first man out of the rotation if there's any sort of struggles or if a guy like Kate Horton like is ready to come up. So I'm probably not drafting. It's not. I think he's more of a streamer in 15 team leagues. That's fair. I mixed it up. Wicks has the goggles. Assad does not. My fault on that. Before we get comments from Cubs fans, Wicks has the cool goggles. Do Assad... Cubs fans make comments? Are they a vocal fan base? Oh, no, they usually they're pretty chill. Oh, okay. They don't say much. They they let the, they go with the flow, like they say. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you on Javier Assad. You know, he's kind of like he's almost a little bit of a poor man's Dane Dunning. Because like I said, I like yeah. Dane Dunning. I think he kind of gets it done a little bit more. And I I even though his skills don't always back up what Dane Dunning does, I believe in it a bit more. It's just been one of those things I can't quantify, but I I still like him. But with Javier Assad, I'm just a little bit nervous that if he's not stranding runners at an 83% clip like he did last year. It could be it could be dicey. So I, I'm a little bit nervous there. I'm more interested in Wicks than Assad. Um, you know, if you're still doing DCs, I could see uh, Assad in that Dane Dunning yeah. capacity that we talked about earlier, just for some innings. But that's about it. And NL yeah. only, which we, which kind of goes yeah. without saying. If a guy has a job in an NL or AL only, they've got some viability. Because like, if he loses a rotation spot, he just goes into the bullpen. He's not like going down to AAA. Exactly. So. I agree with that. All right, Blake Snell, ever heard of him? He goes to your Giants, um, which obviously is not your favorite thing. And the reason I, I feel like I thought we had talked about it is because we had on text. Obviously, right when it happened, yeah. we were talking about it on text, but we haven't talked about it on the show. Again, I know that you're not super giddy about this. I love the move for y'all, and I love the move for Blake. I and I, Oh, you know what? I also talked about it with Bubba, and I talked about you. I said I had to convince Justin that this isn't that bad because I kind of like y'all's team. Um, and I understand the rotation concerns. I totally, totally, totally get that. But now it's Webb, Snell, Harrison as a top three. That's competitive. Uh, Hicks and Wynn as your four or five is a little bit dicier uh, depending on Wynn's health. But Blake Snell, it's only two years, too. I know you were more worried about like a five, six, seven-year deal at two years with the chance to opt out again after this year. Do you feel better about Blake Snell on your ball club now? Are we talking about from a fan perspective or from a – or like a real baseball perspective? Let's or? start with the real – with the fan perspective, and then we'll get into the fantasy perspective because I think you're going to okay. like it from a fantasy. But what did you think about the two years now? Let's let's get to, into the Justin feeling with the two years. You feel better that it's only two years? All right, so if Jenny Butler's listening, she should just like turn the podcast off um, and, or or fast forward a couple minutes because she was <laughs> just like, I hate these people who are complaining about like signing guys. And we've never had a world. Thank series. you, Jenny. We love. Thank you. you. Um, no, thank you, yeah, Jenny, I, for I hate, setting I mean, Justin I, straight. I still hate it. Like at least it's You're not a person. five year deal, um, but. I really don't love from a team's perspective, right? From a player's perspective, these deals are great because it gives him a chance to reset his value, go back out on the market next year, um, and get well, a Why don't you love it from a team perspective with the risk being mitigated? It can't hurt Be- you that much. It, I mean, because the only way we get to retain him next year is if he's bad or hurt. 
Not necessarily. He's going to opt out if he shoves. If he's even <laughs> just above average, he doesn't need to win another uh, side young. Like he's I, I gonna opt out. I don't know out. that's that certain. It depends how things go with y'all. If you guys we just surprise, saw Sean Manaya opt out of a fifteen million dollar deal with because he hated guy. the way you guys handled him, oh, and you know that's oh, why because you you're the one who Blake, told me that. Blake Snell has got a history of hating the way people. He's not going to get manipulated yeah. the way Sean Manaya was. Stop it. Okay, Jenny so, was right. You're an idiot. Yeah, anyway, no. <laughs> what do you think of his fantasy value? <laughs> Um, I mean, this is a great landing spot for his fantasy value. I mean, yeah, we like Snell in San Francisco for sure. It's a great park. Um, you know, like, I don't think it's going to be a great team, but, uh, it's, uh, you know, a team where he should get, you know, enough run support to win some games and stuff. You know, obviously it would have loved to just see him stay in San Diego where he's of course. comfortable, but, um, you know, he could have gone to the Yankees and, you know, had to deal with a short porch. Uh, you know, he could have gone to a number of other teams. Like this isn't a bad division necessarily to pitch in. Uh, it's a great park to pitch in. So it, mm -hmm. it's a fine landing spot. Uh, I don't know if the price like like skyrockets. It's definitely going to go How up. How can it possibly but... go up? It never went down. And that was the thing, dude. I could never get comfortable with the Snell price. There was no damn discount. He's at like pick uh, 60 to 70 range. And has he gone seven, up recently? Seven, seven, 75 in the main events. Okay, um, um, I I don't know. I, I think I might just take Cole Reagans. Is that oh, bad? I for sure. Yeah, no, I'm for sure taking Cole Reagans. Okay. Like, I, that's not I, a question I, to me. Um, I might just take Chris Sale 10 picks later, or 5 picks he, later then. Is that stupid? I don't think it's stupid. Um, I, I mean, I think I think they're very similar in terms yeah. of, like, you know, injury profile. The question is, are you taking, are you taking Snell or Dylan Cease? That was the next guy I was going to mention. Yeah, I, that that becomes the real question. I think. I'm What's the difference between them, I righty think, and lefty? Maybe a different organization fixes ceases Cease? over problems. Yeah, and like, here's the thing I will say because I've been pretty uh, hot on advocating for Cease a bit because. Well, I, I will say I don't love Cease at his new price because people are jumping him yeah. all the way back up to seventy five now. When he was after pick one hundred, I was all in. But I will say it makes sense because we've seen the the good middle and bad out of Cease the last three years, and everyone's acting like just because the bad was the most recent that that's who he is, as if 2022 doesn't still exist in his range of outcomes as a very strong potential. And is there any player that's better than to to take the three year average and just say that that's like a decent baseline than Dylan Cease? Take 354 yeah. ERA, 126 whip with 200 strikeouts, 220 strikeouts, if we're being honest, in 175 innings and say that that's like your projection. Yeah. I will say this. Blake Snell went 52 in a main last night. And I know this because Holy I smokes. the sheet I was working off of didn't have last night's, and I just looked at the updated ADP and his min is 52. Ah, so, so that, by good deductive reasoning there. Okay. Yeah. So that, so that put get... them with – Grayson Rodriguez, Logan Gilbert, Bobby Miller, Max Fried, Logan Webb. I'm not taking him over any of those guys. Like, I, I just... I, and it seems insane to say that so definitively. And I don't think I disagree with you, though. I right? think Max like, you Fried can, is the only one that I You would... can understand why that sounds insane, yeah. though, right? Like, we're saying we won't take him over these guys who are essentially still prospects. When he has two Cy Youngs, Blake Snell does. I, yeah. I understand that those are the only two times that he's reached 180 innings. And in fact, he did it exactly. If he reaches 180, ergo, if he reaches 180 innings, he's guaranteed to win the Cy Young. That's how yeah. that works, right? Okay, mm -hmm. just, just so we know that uh, the voters, if you see him reaching 180, then you have to vote him regardless of his results. But I know it, it's, it's so nerve wracking with the walks, even though he's mentioned that he does it on purpose, that he's cap happy to re-rack against somebody if he gets in a 3-1 count instead of trying to fight his way back into it. It's still so nerve wracking with Blake Snell that I don't think I disagree with you on Grayson and Bobby Miller and Gilbert and Freed and Webb and all those guys in there. Yeah, and especially when you like the one thing we haven't talked about with the Giants is their defense is bad. At least they got Chapman. That helps. Yeah, yeah, Chapman it, does it doesn't help, make but everything, but the outfield helps. the outfield defense is still bad. You Are know? you encouraged by uh, not necessarily as like a fan of like, holy crap, I get to watch this guy hit every day? But Nick Ahmed is going to be the starting shortstop. The left side of the infield is kind of hot. Yeah, okay, that's true. Uh, maybe it does help. Yeah, that does does help. Um, What's Tyro's glove like? Bad. He is okay, so bad then he's defender. at second. Yeah, 
Um, and then uh, first base is give or take. I'm not really that worried yeah, about it. I think I don't really, is, but is the whatever. outfield defense is not good. And the it, outfield like, statues, and we don't know how good Jung Hoo Lee is in center. But the other the he, corners his are scouting statues. reports from Korea is not that he is not a good defender. So he's going to play in a spacious center field. That's a little bit nerve wracking. So with two okay. corner guys that aren't good. So I know the answer to this, but I will confirm it. You're not moving Snell up after this signing. No, I mean, okay. I'll, I'm gonna up, I'm gonna update all my projections tomorrow. So okay. if you if you're looking like so, it may, it may go up. It probably won't. Uh, but uh, I will. You know, for those of you who subscribe to the ranks on the Patreon, mm -hmm. I will have updated auction values and, and projections done tomorrow for your weekend drafts. Excellent. All right, Michael Renzen signs with Texas. Does this? Uh, negate the fact that we, we will see Jordan Montgomery there because I know a lot of us are saying Texas, why are you not phoning Jordan Montgomery and just getting this done? You need him. Where is I, he going to play? I have no idea, man. I, I heard a rumor today that he's going to wait till the QO goes away, or, or until he can't be offered the quality uh, the qualifying offer again or something. Which I mean, I, I think it's just until the season that, starts or something. I thought that was June. Oh my God, is it June? Since um oh wait 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 oh okay I'm re I was reading this wrong so because he was traded from the Cardinals to the Rangers he couldn't get a QO this year which yeah or last year which oh, means sorry, he yeah. could get one next year if that's till June that'd be crazy yeah I don't, I don't know, know when know, that man. is but I either way understand. like how I, I don't understand how he's not signed like, how the Yankees true. not have, how come how come they haven't brought him back because they are so far over the luxury tax and they've been over the luxury tax for so many years. Oh, they'll cost they a billion dollars. That they have to pay if they if they go over it again, which he would put them over, they'd have to pay 110% towards the tax. So for every Oof. dollar they spend, they have to spend 1.5 times that towards the luxury tax. So like a hundred million dollar deal okay. costs them 220 million dollars. So that's total. that's understandable then why maybe I mean they so have their open talks with him according to Heyman, but apparently that's gonna be I bet you it's all deferred kind of deal money. That would be. Yeah. Does that does that work that way though? Do you, yeah. Can you okay? Yeah. And why isn't JD Davis signed or JD Martinez? Why how come no one wants him? I th I think he will get signed, but I think he's gonna have to wait in season. I think he's gonna Seems have to like wait it. for the the Padres can move once Machado is healthy enough to play the field. Like Padres yeah. come in and, and then they'll they'll sign him. That would be a nice fit. All right, but back to Lorenzen. So Texas goes with Lorenzen. No more Jordan Montgomery rumors for them right now. At least now, not that they couldn't still use him. But Michael Lorenzen will ramp up. Looks like he'll get that fifth starters role. He had a nice season. I kind of feel bad for him that coming off of that season, he couldn't get signed until a week before the season starts. You yeah. know, he put up 153 innings with a 4.18 ERA and a 1.21 WHIP. That's a pretty solid campaign. And he basically put up 98 innings of a similar season back in 2022 as well. So like, you know, he's a solid back end type rotation guy. Four five. Um, do we like Michael Lorenzen in Texas? Um, I mean, I guess like, like as a streamer in a 15 team league, like yeah. friends is not anything special, but he can, he can be streamed. It's a good park, a uh, good team. Uh, you know, division has got some potable opponents in the angels and, uh, and the A's. So I think, you know, you could spot start him in a, in a kind of a deeper format, but I think he's mostly ailed. Yeah, I, th I think so probably uh, too with Lorenzen. Maybe a team streamer for a guy like myself who drafts a bunch of guys from crappy teams, that concept that we were talking about uh, a couple weeks ago with no wonder I had no wins because Lorenzen could steal some cheap wins for you. He could be that guy mm -hmm. if you have four guys on crappy teams that are good pitchers, get a Lorenzen to balance out and get some of those dubs or somebody else on a good team, but that type of pitcher, like a Cole Irvin, can steal you some dubs. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I've been drafting, I, I can say that I've confidently been drafting Descofani entirely. Like, uh, or it's not Descofani, Varland, all draft oh, okay. season. I was like, why were you drafting Descofani? No, no, I, I was, ne what I meant to say is I was never drafting Descofani despite the rumors that he was going to be their fifth starter. And Minnesota was the one saying it, right? So, like, yeah. I understand why people were saying that. Minnesota was suggesting that he was going to be the fifth starter. I didn't give a shit. Because of his health track record, it's horrendous. And I just think Louis Varland is much better. He's the next in the long line of uh, with Ryan and Ober, that same type of profile, uh, where if he can fix his home runs, he's a stud. So he got named this into the rotation, Descofani to the IL, and then he promptly went out and gave up eight earned runs against my Tigers. However, I went and watched it, and I'm unmoved by it. 
It does not yeah. bother me at all for Louis Varland. I hope it lowers his price. Even if it lowers his price by 10 picks, I will take it because it was a lot of Dinkin and Duncan. It just wasn't something that really made me all that nervous about Varland. He's going in like the mid 200s. I think that's a totally fine price for Louis Varland. What do you think of him as a Minnesota starter now? I think he's one of these guys that you take a dart throw on. I've never been a Varland guy. I have always uh, been the Varland detractor. Um, but like, there is raw talent in this army and and he's looked really really good at times this spring and so like i'll take the occasional dart throw because he's going so late especially in 10 and 12 team leagues but even in 15s i've uh, taken a couple gambles i just i want people to be ready to drop him because he does give up way too many home runs he's a two pitch guy for the most part um and i don't know that like we know they're minors, but we've not really seen it that much in the majors. Um, and so far in spring, like the swing strike rate is nothing to write home about. We're talking, you know, 10% right now. So uh, I, I I do think he's a, a decent guy to take a gamble on. But I also think this is one of those that you shouldn't be too attached to because he could be out of the rotation once Dead Sclafani comes back. Um, he could just blow you up because he can give up home runs really, really easily. Uh, and the controls, like, like his controls, good, but it's not like Bailey Ober's control, right? Like Bailey Ober doesn't walk anybody. Uh, it's still pretty strong though for Varlin. It's yeah, 6 you know, it's, last year. Yeah, it's not bad. I'm not saying but, it's, it's you know, uh, all this hate on Varlin is why Nick Pollock doesn't want to do a podcast with you. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, maybe that's what like <laughs> if Nick was a be, like not a better arguer. I, if Nick liked to argue more, I think him and I could do a podcast. There you go. Together. Yeah. Because we love to argue actually... back and forth. Like, you know, there's still a, on my whiteboard, you know, that you can't see because it's on the other side of the screen. Um, It still has his writing where it said Caleb Smith is good. So like, <laughs> him and I have had epic arguments on pitchers. <laughs> That's amazing. The the old Caleb Smith, when, when, wasn't there a phone call in the mm. middle of a podcast one time with regards to Caleb Smith? <laughs> yes, there incredible. was. Yeah. I actually so, got to see Nick's uh, apartment uh, while I was in New York. Oh, cool. How was that? How was the lair? It's uh it's pretty cool. Um it makes me feel good about my uh you know my little shack because Nick's looks really, really nice, like uh when when he's on screen and then it's like you know crazy the, the tight shot. Else, so. yeah, yeah, exactly. Of course. So, which that's is fantastic. exactly how mine is set up, right? Like yeah, that's like, how you gotta do yeah, it. You got get a little, you, you get a little tight shot here, and then if you like move the screen at all like you would see this disaster that was my office this is that's this is actually way nicer than mine that's hilarious um all right so i like varland a little bit more than that i just think he's kind of basically right in line with ober and ryan and much cheaper than ober who i i love he's my favorite Whoa. ober is you think that they're like you think that like he could actually like be like produce as well as like ryan and ober this year if he can keep the homers in check. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, okay. I, then I, you I, do I like him that. more than me. It's that same sort of profile. He throws 95. He had a 13% swing and strike rate last year. It's only been 10% in spring this year. I, I hear you on that. But, you know, I think his his stuff is kind of being refined. He's 26 years old. I really think he cuts that same mold. And if you love Ober, which you do, I feel like Varlin's a cheaper version. Why not take that shot? So that's I, I, no, I think you, I definitely think you should take the shot. I just, I'm not as confident. You're just not as married gonna, to him. Yeah. That, that's I fair. don't think, I don't think I, I'm not as confident. He's going to reach those heights. Let's talk about a guy that we took off our boards after we got his injury news. Now that was quite some time ago. And now we've actually gotten to the point where things are kind of coming around a little bit on Kyle Bradish. His elbow is responding. Well, he's thrown a bullpen. I don't know if it's changed his timeline, which I think is, is, uh, late april to early may but has anything changed with you on kyle bradish with regards to possibly drafting him if i've got il spots and a good amount of il spots yeah i'll take the gamble because i just i mean he's you know his top 30 pitcher when he's healthy so um but like my nfbc drafts are coming up where i've got no il spots nope it's not gonna touch him still still not at all no because I, mean, I understand because it could be a, a month still without yeah him. Well, and it, it could all automatically turn into two months, and then it could turn into and then zero or the uh, six. So is like, what I mean. Like, yeah. if you if you made me bet right now whether he was going to have a hundred innings or zero, no in between. He's either going to have a hundred okay. or he's going to have zero. I'm going to bet on zero. Really? Yeah. 
That's probably fair. That's probably yeah. the right move. No, that's cool. I just want to see if you were anywhere uh, closer to him with IL slots with Kyle Bradish. And I can. You know what? I just took him in our head to head league because we have IL slots. I'll throw him yeah. on there and I'll yeah, ride exactly. it until I can't. Second to last pick. All right. Gavin Williams is heading to the IL with an elbow issue. Uh, this one's kind of a bummer. I know he's been a little bit of the afterthought in that Cleveland rotation. You know, everyone's in on Logan Allen. Uh, Tanner Bybee is like the dude. And then you jump down to Logan Allen as far as the three rookies last year Bybee, Allen, and Williams. Bybee's the hot shit. Allen's like, okay, I didn't get Bybee, but I'll take Allen much cheaper. And then Williams was kind of like thrown off to the side, wasn't as well regarded at all. What do we think about Gavin Williams now that he's hurt? Obviously, I know your answer for NFBC is going to be no yeah. go, but where do you stand with him? What, what's his outlook for you now that he has an elbow issue that's going to put Gavin Williams on the IL? I think he's just off my board completely. Even even in leagues where almost I've got unlimited IL spots, um, mm -hmm. I was already concerned about his control issues and whether or not that was going to come back to bite him. Now he's got an elbow issue, which you know even if he comes back from like those can tend to exacerbate control issues. So uh, to me, this is a long term play. I'm looking at him in 25, 26, not in 24. Okay, I think that's totally fair with Gavin Williams and more or less how I'm playing it too. I wasn't really in on him all that much. I actually did take him in the head-to-head -head that we talked about again because we do have IL slots there. This was before the injury, um, so I'm not particularly thrilled with that pick, but uh, I, I can cut him off our IL too because we only have three IL spots in that, or maybe even two in the in the Yahoo. I don't know how many we have. It's not that many. I think um, but three, we gotta, but I'm not it, it might be, two, it's two or three for sure. Yeah. Um, we got to talk about these closers. So let's get into it. Right after you and Jason did the closer preview, Devin Williams, boom, three months. I know you're not drafting him in NFBC. What are we doing with him? Uh, or what are we doing with that bullpen now? Uh, forget Devin Williams for a minute. Who's your spec? Who you like? Did I lose you? I think it's Joel Piamps. I don't know if I'm saying going that with right. Piamps? I can never remember. Uh, okay. Oh, that was weird. Um, I think I'm taking Joel yeah, Piamps. Yeah, a little glitch there. And not, yeah, I, he's the only guy who got saved. So can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can okay hear now. you. It's 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 being oh, okay. goofy right now, but I can hear you. I don't know what's going on. That's weird. Okay. Uh, I apologize to people watching on YouTube because I won't be able to edit it out, but – uh, for the podcast, I will. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go with Joel Piams. He's the only guy who got saves last year in mm -hmm. in the bullpen. So I know Trevor McGill uh, was really really good. Um, I know a lot of people are interested in Abner Uribe. Ooh, ooh, but, ooh, me 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 me. I like Abner Uribe. But Milwaukee doesn't like to give saves to the young guys, right? Like they don't want to like they don't want to bump up their arbitration numbers, and so I just I think that. Uh, I mean, there's also good, he is, but there's also like, I think a really good chance that this is just a straight committee, at least starting out. Um, and then maybe one of these three guys emerge. So I'm, I'm trying, probably trying to do my best to not invest very strongly in this bullpen right now. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe I take a gamble on, on one of the guys late if they're available late. But, uh, for the most part, I want to get my saves from more secure options where I kind of have a better feeling of the situation. That is exactly how I feel, but Uribe is the spec I want to take in the mid 300s. So uh, I don't disagree with you on the general point. And McGill's even cheaper, by the way, 384. So you're right. Like yeah. Uribe is kind of the hot um, NFBC play, and McGill's kind of the afterthought. Pi Amps is actually probably the highest pick. Yeah, he's 305. They kind of go in order like uh, early 300s, mid 300s, late 300s with Pi Amps, Uribe, McGill. I'm with you. I'm not really messing with any of it. But if I'm desperate and I'm looking for something uh, as like a closer three spec, I'll probably just go with your eBay, even though you're, you make a fair point about their uh, a, aversion to young closers. Yohan yeah. Duran has a strained oblique, and I am very nervous about this because they said it's a moderate strain, and that everything I looked up on that says like six to eight weeks. Yep. And, then, and then Caleb Thielbar, the lefty option, he's also murked. Uh, for a little bit as well. He's dealing with a uh, hammy, which at least it's not an arm injury, but he would have been a guy that you might be looking at next. I'm going right to Griffin Jacks, which I did in our head-to-head -head league. The, I, I was pretty fortuitous yep. that I was on the clock when this news came out. I needed a closer. Bang, I went with Griffin Jacks. Is that the guy right now, Griffin Jacks? And then we'll actually talk about Duran because I want to see where you're at with him. But uh, do you like Griffin Jacks? 
Yeah, I think Griffin Jacks is due for the next six to eight weeks, and I think that's probably the amount of time that Duran is going to be out for. Uh, it's just, just a huge bummer. Uh, Duran mm-hmm. was looking like maybe like the guy that would jump into the elite tier in terms of the AP with Williams he was out. For me. Yeah, uh, I know that I've been a little bit less um, interested in drafting Duran than you, just because of the way that Minnesota uses the usage. But it's still a bummer. I just you know um, you just don't like love to see it. Uh, I think I might take the discount on Duran if I if I'm you know okay stashing right like okay yeah that, that was my next question would you do it in NFC and if, though I think I would um, okay I don't usually like to stash guys especially guys who are going to be out this long but you're talking about a guy who's potentially elite closer that you'll get you know six weeks into the season um, mm-hmm. like he's just going to go straight back into the role and while these injuries can get kind of re-aggravated. It's not like he's would miss the entire season if it, you know, it would just delay the timetable. So um, I think I would be willing to draft her on. Uh, What's the price point that you would want to pay past pick hundred past pick 100, obviously past pick one. Yeah. So. I know you're going to get the um, updated main and, and hook his ADP is one Oh three in the last four main events. That's insanely high. I would not do that. What about that max of 181? You'd probably pay that. I would pay that. That I would pay. Um, yeah, that that I would have no problem paying. What's your starting point? 130 for Duran? That you start considering? 130 would put him around... I'm, I'm trying to... Kenley Jansen, who's also injured, we're about to talk oh, yeah, about. Yeah, we're about to talk about in a moment anyway. LeClerc, uh, I think, is the next is the closest kind of set guy, and he's at one forty nine. Yeah, Unless I'm missing somebody. I think one forty nine is a. I, I'd rather, much rather have Alzale. Um Okay. So even uh, even the non committal attitude that Council's playing toward him, you think that's kind of coach speak, and Alzale yeah, might I mean, be a little bit of I a think bargain. That, I, yeah, I think I think Alzale is a bargain right now, personally. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm. That still feels like too high of a price for guys going to miss, you know, potentially two months of the season. Um, I, I tend to agree there. I'm a little bit nervous. And we talked all off season about not inviting injury onto our teams. I don't know that I'm going to make that hard pivot now for somebody like Duran, even though he's amazing. And I had really moved him up. Yeah. What about a guy that has been stuck in my brain ever since our boy Eno talked to me about him ages ago. And that is Brock Stewart. When I, I want to tell you how long ago this was. He was a starter for the Dodgers, and he came up in 2016. Uh, So it was either 2016 or 2017, like one of his first two years. He wasn't really putting up all that great of numbers or anything. So this wasn't like Eno was on some hot uh, performing prospect, but he was saying like the the shape of his stuff and like the the mechanic, you know, the way everything looks when you go under the hood was encouraging. Well, turns out it's fit for the bullpen because he had an excellent year last year in 28 innings out of the Minnesota bullpen, 36% K rate, 10% walk rate with a 20% swinging strike rate for Brock Stewart. Any interest in a spec there if you miss out on Jacks? Yeah, I think so. Just because the way the Minnesota bullpen has operated in the past was very much like, Tampa Bay's right. Yep. You know, you've got Rocco Baudelli as the manager. He's a, he's a raised guy. Uh, and so it wouldn't be surprising to me if they just make this a committee kind of moving forward, at least until Duran's back. Um, and like I said, one of the reasons I didn't want Duran uh, at his price point was because they like to use him in multi-inning roles. They don't necessarily bring him in for just the ninth. Um, you know, often he's just kind of getting a hold and that doesn't, you know, isn't as valuable. So, yep. What's to say that they don't just go straight committee for the next month until Duran's back uh, and that Brock Stewart sneaks some pretty cheap, you know, kind of sneaky saves. So I uh, actually really like that as kind of a, a, you know, end of your you know draft kind of gamble. Kind of your last pick, to be honest, like he's in the 400s. Like that's not an expensive yep. price for Brock Stewart because everyone's on Griffin Jacks, which I do understand. And again, I am too. There's a world where I would get both. I would go yep. Jax and Stewart and gladly just kind of take all the Minnesota saves. So yep. uh, maybe that's an option there. And, it, and it's short term, but that's okay with the prices that you're paying on both because Jax is only uh, like early pick 300 right now. You can cut both if Duran comes back and he's a G off rip. 
So I have no problem with that. Uh, Jordan Romano, elbow inflammation. Again, these all these news came so quickly right after y'all did the pod, and it's a bunch of top dogs getting hit. He's not on the IL yet. He's nursing elbow inflammation. They haven't said he's going to go on the IL yet, but how scared are you about Jordan Romano right now? And also Eric Swanson's hurt. So he's another one where the secondary guy is also hurt. So I don't even know what the hell you would do if it's not Romano. Uh, but what do we think about Romano's health right now? Let's do that first before we talk about who might take the role. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty petrified. You know, I uh, I think I drafted Romano in a head hit league. Uh, I made sure to grab Yumi Garcia because I think he's in the sky up uh, right mm -hmm. now, especially with Eric Swanson dealing with his own issues. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty petrified at this point. Romano dealt with a back issue last year, and now he's dealing with elbow. Um, you just wonder if he just can't hold up. So, uh, I'm not drafting Romano. Um, I will take gambles on Yumi Garcia kind of late in drafts. Uh, this what weekend if nate pearson any love i just i don't know if they're he was always ticketed tonight. for the bullpen right he I, was i wanted but... him to become a starter but it just never was it never really seemed like it was in the cards could he maybe finally find some avenue now he's he hasn't had a great spring walking 12 percent. i mean he still has a 15 i don't even know if he's gonna rate. make the team to be quite honest i, so. I don't either maybe yeah. these injuries to swanson and romano would help nate pearson uh he is your literal last pick if you can't if he if he goes before that you don't even mess with it but yeah. if you can get him last pick i think maybe there's a little bit of intrigue there with nate pearson i do think jimmy garcia i i've heard them say jimmy on their oh, on their jimmy? broadcast oh that makes it, sense yeah with the, well, yeah, if you think the y, YJ y, thing, yeah. but it does say Yimi on baseball reference. So I don't know. I tend to go by baseball reference, but the Toronto broadcast for the last two years has called him Jimmy, Buck Martinez. So I'm going with Buck on that one, and it's Jimmy Garcia for me. But he is the guy I think you go for right now, and he's not very expensive at all because right yeah. now there is no news that uh, Romano is out. So you can get jimmy at you know past pick 350 as a spec there and if he doesn't get the job and romano's okay you just you cut him you cut yeah. garcia okay um david bednar working through a lot he should be okay but we know what you can do with all the shoulds and coulds uh are you specking on anybody there are you avoiding david bednar how are you playing the, the pittsburgh situation um yeah i'm 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 drafting Bednar. I'm not super worried about it. It doesn't sound super serious, but I think I would maybe take a gamble on a road to, a road to Stratman Lee if yeah. I if he's I if guy. I took Bednar because he's definitely the next guy up, right? He's he's the closer. Um, if if Bednar goes down, so you you, fe you feeling a little something for uh, a road this? <laughs> Did you see? Yeah, that maybe video? some some mother issues or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> so weird, dude. What uh, the hell? was that dude anyway uh but yeah he's the clear guy to get uh frankly if i take bednar i'm gonna make it a point to get uh, to, i'm gonna i'm gonna handcuff there i, I really think i just want to do that even yeah. if i only get a few saves from chapman early on again he's such a easy pick in the mid 300s that you just cut him after if everything's yeah. good with bednar easy cuts so for me i'm doing the handcuff there for sure with a roll this chapman uh Agreed. kenley jansen's busted ass back he's slated to throw today and they have an evening game so unfortunately he's not we don't have information while we're doing the podcast because we're doing it in the middle of the afternoon um if he throws tonight and everything looks okay are you in are you out have you ever been in on jansen this year what's going on with him and as he ages and you know has trade rumors swirling out of boston as well by the way yeah, I have no problem drafting Jansen. Um, I got him in the eleventh round of Barf and felt pretty good about that. Uh, and that's really right cheap. around, yeah, it's where his ADP is right now. Uh, so he, especially, you know, he drops and drafts. I mean, his max in the main event is one ninety one. Um, I feel like even if he gets traded, like he's gonna be the closer wherever he goes. Exactly. So like, yep. I, I think he's gonna be okay. He's just a guy that seems to always kind of put it together, and you know the. Overall numbers aren't amazing, but you get a bunch of saves. And um, mm -hmm. Boston is still like they're not an elite team by any stretch of the imagination, but they're still good. They're going to get plenty I of agree. saves. So, um, yeah, I and if he ended up on the Dodgers, like he's been rumored to potentially end up on, like he's now on the best team in baseball in his closer. Don't so, do that to my boy Evan Phillips. Come on. Now. This is why I have not drafted Evan Phillips anywhere. I, I just, I just disagree I, with you fundamentally. On that one because you don't want it to be true or you actually because the rumors well, because have I, all been that that's i know that i know there's been rumors been. there but I, i've also felt at least until the recent mains and i know that probably go up again because he got a save uh in the first soul game oh for sure 
But until then, he'd been going around pick 90 to 100. I thought the discount was just too nice not to take Evan Phillips. And sure. that's why I've been comfortable doing it, because even though he's not an A-plus guy where it's like 35-plus saves, uh, Bruzdar's out. Actually, that's our last note, is that Bruzdar Gratterall is going to the IL with shoulder inflammation, and he was somebody that did have me uh, with a little bit of concern for Phillips, but with him out and no Jansen trade in sight, I felt comfortable with Evan Phillips. Turns out you do not, so that was my question for you. Yeah. Are you specking on anybody in the Dodgers bullpen, or are you just waiting for a Jansen trade? No, I mean, if if I if I don't think that if if you're under the belief that Jansen is not going to get traded to the Dodgers, that they're not going to make that move, then Phillips is the dude, and he's a really good dude and should be going way higher than he's going. Love him. Um, uh, but my my only fear is that they they decide that they're going to bring back Kenley Jansen because for some reason that front office just loves that guy. I mean, the, he's done a lot of greatness for them. So yeah, I get abso that. absolutely. But when you've got an elite guy like I, no, I agree. Phillips, like why? I love Phillips, and I want him to be the dude. And you're right. There is a little bit of wish casting there, but I don't want to get too stupid with it. If he starts going at like pick fifty or sixty because he got a save this week, I will tap the brakes on that. Yeah. Did you like know? He, by the way, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was I was gonna say if you could if you could like look in your crystal ball and tell me that Evan Phillips is gonna be on the Dodgers as the as the guy right um mm -hmm. or they're just not going to trade for anybody yeah they're um, not going to trade for jansen or an established closer th then he should be going in the tier of emmanuel class a camilo duvall that's and, what i'm saying here. that's why and, i and have like, shares yeah like yeah. so like for me like the 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 not drafting him this year and the apprehension has been all about the dodgers bringing someone else in okay that, that, that I can't disagree with then because they have shown a penchant for doing it. And there were Jansen rumors swirling around during the off season here yeah. as we led into spring, maybe with the back cropping up and a lat issue before that, maybe that's why th those r rumors have tamped down. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens with Phillips this weekend. You don't have to give everything away. I, listen, we always talk about our stuff. We know we play in high stakes leagues and all that. People listen that are in our leagues. So you don't have to give a word by word of how you're doing it, but have the injuries changed your approach to saves from what you were doing before the rash of injuries to the high end guys? I mean, I don't think my approach has changed. I may be okay. more aggressive, like um, in terms of making sure I get one of those guys that I think are either elite or, or really stable. I can't um, remember what y'all said. Um, how do you feel about your boy, uh, Camilla Duvall? I can't remember from the pod if you were hot on him. Um, I'm not as hot on him as I think the market is. Like I was I gonna say, he's zipping up the board. Yeah, um, and I think he's gonna continue to. I just I do worry about like the like workload that he's had, and that um, uh, that he does go through these periods of having trouble finding the zone and stuff like that. But like I still think he is like a second tier closer. Just I have him towards the bottom of that second tier. Like I would mm -hmm. probably rather have like a, a David Bednar um or alexis diaz uh guys like that um you certainly get a discount on them relative to deval because a lot of people are kind yeah. of inching him up toward the first tier with these injuries especially now mm -hmm. to where he's going he in the in the most recent i i have I don't know if it's the exact data that you have with the four recent um, uh, main events i got from 318 to 321 but camilo duval is now only going three picks after emmanuel Classe. Yeah, see, I think Class A, like, I don't, I mean, I get that it's a new manager and that, like, maybe they want to do something different, but, like, he's no, still the so dude. Stupid. Like, I mean, I just that'd can't so imagine, dumb. like, that he is not, like, the, the quote unquote dude in. I'd be Cleveland. floored by so, that. Me too. So, um, uh, for me, yeah, uh, for me, like, I, I just can't put Doval right next to Class A or right next to Iglesias. I think he deserves to be going a little bit later. And so I'm probably not going to end up with Doval. But okay. in terms of my strategy, like nothing's really changed. I'm going to try and target, you know, one to two, you know, you know, top we, three. We, we pay for saves. Yeah. I'm, I'm, we we like, do pay for saves. If, if something happens where in my main event, I don't have one of those guys, uh, it's because something didn't go to plan or somebody dropped that probably shouldn't have dropped. And I went, you know what? I'll take the gamble on some later guys just because this guy in the second or third or fourth round, like just was too good of a value to pass up.
Yeah, no, I, I think that's that's where I'm at, you know, and again, I've been open about the fact that I want to pay for saves. It is harder now as some of the yeah. studs that I would be, the pool I'm choosing from has gotten thinner. So now it is going to be a little bit harder, but it only strengthens my resolve to to pay for saves. And I understand you, you know, well, these guys have gotten hurt. Anybody can get hurt. I understand yep. that. I still want the best guys that are out there right now. It, I've already at got. least it's happening right now as opposed yes. to a month into the season. Like exactly like the whole don't pay for saves because this kind of thing can happen. Um, I think would have been a better argument if this happened mid April and you had already paid for those saves as opposed and then to like right now scraps. where, yeah, yeah, right now, like, yes, is it going to be as good of a year for saves as it was last year? Clearly not. But mm -hmm. like I still the elite guys are still the elite guys. Yep. And we did get one back in Edwin Diaz. So, you know, at least that helps soften the blow a little bit. But anyway, there's a little rundown of the closer situation, plus a bunch of pitcher injuries. Figured that was the best thing that could help people with their drafts this weekend. Justin, great to be back with you. We're going to be on again tomorrow. I'll figure out something, maybe a hitter version of this. I don't know. Depends if there's enough hitter news to kind of talk about. But we'll, we'll do something else that is very useful for people's drafts coming up this weekend because it's a huge draft weekend. You got some stuff coming up. You're going to be streaming. Give us a rundown of that before we get out of here. So I've got five drafts that I will be streaming as long as they all fill. So um, I need some people jump into the Beat Justin Mason League, which is Monday night. But uh, tomorrow night I have uh, $150 online auction. I'll be streaming. The link will That'll be, be Friday night, the 22nd, Bart, just in case yeah, people sorry, aren't listening the day. Yeah, of. the 22nd. Um, my main event, the 23rd, I think at mm -hmm. 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern. You can go from uh, my stream to yours on that one because I'll be streaming mine. Yep. Uh, and then I have an NFBC $1,500 auction that I'll be streaming Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern. The Road Warrior Online Championship, which is the beat Justin Mason League that needs to be filled. Oh, it's already up to 6 out of 12. Okay. It was two more people joined since uh, we started recording. Um, I've, been, I've been looking at that. I'm not. Yeah, you, currently, you should do it. it. Should be fun. The only we could stream I'm doing together. Is a head -to -head, but yeah, that would be kind that of. That would be I'll, really, really fun. I will consider uh, it. But I did sign up then, for a second main. Oh, you did. Nice. Okay. I did. Um, I did. And then uh, I have another fifteen hundred dollar auction, which is on the twenty seventh uh, at eight p.m. Eastern, okay, so okay. the night before the start of the season. So, um, yeah. So I'll, I, I've already made posts for. You know the fan graphs where you can get mm -hmm. both the live draft board and uh and the link to the youtube uh stream so go there to uh watch um it's uh, always a lot of fun a lot of people yelling at me in the comments while i'm uh <laughs> drafting or auctioning uh, which and is actually combos. really really helpful um for me because there'll be guys people will be like well, what about this guy and the, and you know i won't respond because i know people in the drafts are watching sometimes but then you're but, like ooh. I, I, hadn't I go, him. ooh, I think about that guy. Yeah, like that's, oh, maybe it's time to pop on this guy. So, I like um, it. yeah, it, it is, it's a lot of fun. I really, really enjoy it. Uh, uh, there is swearing um, when I get sniped. Yes. So, uh, uh, you know, don't, don't play it around your kids. Yeah, I, I, I would obviously say the same for my main event when Jeff uh, and Tanner Bell invariably snipe me, when Shelly Verstrait invariably snipes me. Uh, I will be displeased with that. But I'm excited how, how many uh, how many people are doing their CLQ in yours? Oh, a decent number. Let me uh, let me. So I've got some... six of the not or six, six. of the fifteen are are people you know doing what? their CLQs. They had the same idea that we had, which was yeah, to do that's it exactly. when everyone's in Vegas, yep. and I respect it. I, well, because mine I, is going on right at the same time as like the Mike the Mouth party, so like, oh. like people are they're 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 re they were really like you know like oh it it's Jeff's CLQ by the yeah. by, um and then one it's Shelly's two, three four five. Well, I think I, got she, five. I think that's only Shelly's only draft. I think so. Yeah, so that's going to be her CLQ. It's uh, Jeff's and it's three other folks. Yeah. Uh, I've got Brian Edwards, Adam Mayer, Tom Rodriguez, Scott Davis, Alec Gosling, and Doug Roth, all of them. I've also got an overall winner in James Gable. Uh, in oh, my goodness. As well. So it's, oh it's not goodness. as easy as a draft as people are making it out. No, to be, and but... listen, I never, I want to be clear, I never thought it was going to be easy. Yeah. I simply said easier, which yep. even if it's 2% easier, 
I'll take it. I need every edge I can get. It's not easy because there's other names I recognize that aren't in the industry, but I know from playing in the in the main event for a few years, um, such as Brent Grooms, who I've played in a league with before, um, among others. But I cite him specifically because uh, we've we've talked about him before and being in my league. And oh, it's not going to be an easy room. There's I didn't no even mention. Thing. I didn't even mention that Lucas Bieri and Mike oh Richards. My. Who have goodness. both individually won overalls themselves are in my practice. Oh my goodness. Man, it really did not work out for you doing the sneaky Saturday yeah. draft, huh? No, I think it's fine. I get to see No, it it's great. It'll Listen, I, I can't wait. Again, you're not finding an easy room. It does not exist. When is when is your second draft? Wednesday. Okay, the night before the season. Yes. What's we'll all the we'll have all that news. I figure let's go ahead and get in there. Are you do doing the late night thing. one or are you doing which one are you doing? I, I'm doing the mid. You know, I've, I've been going to okay. bed earlier uh, lately. So I, I'm just doing it at 7 p.m. Central. Are you doing that one with a partner or by yourself? I'm doing that one solo. The boys mm -hmm. flying solo for both. I, I was going to ask you if you wanted to share a main event team, but I, I know uh, we had talked about it. And I thought I thought about maybe asking you and or Greg, but I'm going to do I'm going to do two solo. You know, um, I really wanted to do a second one last year. By the time I went up to do it, it was already full. And thankfully, yeah. Greg sends out those emails that he said, like, there's only X number of teams. I think it was like 52 when he sent it. And I said, you know what? Don't drag ass. If you want to do it, do it now. And, you know, set aside some extra money this year to to play into if I if I wanted to. And I decided to pull the trigger on it. So I'm very I, excited. I've thought about trade uh, changing one of my options to a main. To a main? I still may. The, 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 the Wednesday one, I might change it to a main. But I wouldn't do well, that. yours. I would do the late night one. Yeah. That, and that'd be cool. Um, the hard part is the ROI on the main event isn't as good as it is in the Oxford Championship. It's just True. a bigger and overall price. You now have proven track record in the auctions too. That is a strength of yours. So yeah. you're playing to your strength makes a lot of sense. I think I'm better at drafts than I am auctions. So I've been playing to my strength. I'm, yeah, I'm definitely a better auction drafter for sure. So uh, not that I don't want you in the main with a second team, but if I'm advising you, I'm probably saying stick with the with the two auctions. But if you get in the yeah. second main, I'll, I'll be I there just either way. I'll be in I your stream wish, either way. I just wish I was wit or rich so I could have just afforded to just do two mains and two auctions. So if, <laughs> two if mains, someone two would auctions. Like, yeah, someone if like I was to just rich. me, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> if you were going to sponsor Justin, he did have an excellent year last year, so your money is not necessarily going to be thrown away. I should set up like one of those. Like there was there was like a website for like poker players where like you could like buy a stake. That's, that's right. I should, I should set it there, up for me. There you go. I think that's that's the thing to do. Buy a stake in Justin's main event. Um, yeah. And just be comfortable with Bailey Ober. Because if not, yeah. then, you know, if he's you have Bailey Ober, team. don't buy into that. Because he's going to be on yeah. the damn team whether you like it or not. All right, Justin. Great talking with you. We'll talk tomorrow morning as well. Take care. Take it easy.